the starting lineups for the Chicago Red Stars. In goal number one, Aaron McLeod. <laughs> At forward number three, Ella Masser. At midfield number four, Alyssa Motz. On defense number five, Carmelina Moscato. At midfield number six, Zakia Bywaters. At forward number nine, Maribel Dominguez. Rachel Kwan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Dillboy Stadium in Somerville, Massachusetts, as we get set for Boston Breakers soccer here tonight. Scott Sudikoff alongside Matty Sadler getting set to bring you the action here today between the visiting Chicago Red Stars and the homestanding Boston Breakers. Both of these teams playing in their third match here this evening. The Breakers coming at 1-0-1. They beat the Western New York Flash last Saturday by a score of 2-1, to one, a pair of goals from Heather O'Reilly to get the job done for the Breakers, while Chicago comes in at 0-1-1 on the season. The, the Red Stars bring a very um, interesting lineup to the team. Uh, Rory Dame said, you know, his team is still working together and, and trying to figure out how to work with one another. And we saw in the last game against Western New York Clash that the Breakers are, are really starting to work and really starting to, um, you know, communicate well as a unit. So we'll see how today plays out. Let's run through today's starting lineups. They are brought to you by TCG Network Services for Chicago. They run a 4-4-2 here this evening. On the defensive line, they have Carmelina Moscato, Rachel Kwan, Lydia Vandenberg, and Michelle Winino. Midfielders are Zakia Bywaters, Leslie Osborne, and Lori Kalupny. Forwards, or excuse me, another midfielder, throw her in is Ella Masser. And the forwards are Alyssa Motz and Maribel Dominguez. In goal for the Red Stars here this evening is Aaron McLeod. And now the starting lineup for the Breakers. They run a 4-3-3. Defenders are Cat Whitehill, Julie King, Kaya McNeil, or excuse me, Kia McNeil, and Joe Dragata. Midfielders are Heather O'Reilly, Joanna Lohman, and Mariah Noguera. Forwards, Sydney LaRue, Leanne Sanderson, and Katie Shepfer. Ashley Phillips is in goal here tonight for the Breakers. The National Anthem complete here at Dillboy Stadium, and we're minutes away from the opening kickoff. The Breakers and the Red Stars. The Breakers come in at 1-0-1. Four points so far this season, tied for third in the NWSL standings. Their last contest coming last Saturday. As we mentioned, a 2-1 victory over the Western New York Flash, and really on the back of uh, Heather O'Reilly as she came to play last Saturday. Absolutely. Heather O'Reilly had a wonderful game last Saturday. She she showed why she's one of the best players in the country. And, um, you know, her two goals led the way for the Boston Breakers for their first win of the season. Yeah, the Breakers fell behind one nothing just seven minutes in. And then nine minutes later, O'Reilly scored from LaRue. Later in the contest, in the 75th minute, O'Reilly hit a post and then later scored the game-winning goal. That was in the 83rd minute on an assist from Leanne Sanderson. So O'Reilly, with the two goals in that game, was named NWSL Player of the Week, and deservedly so. Yeah, we should keep an eye on her today. You know, there's nothing stopping her, and, and she should continue that offensive power and that speed that she has down the right side. And looking back at the Chicago Red Stars, their last matchup was last Saturday as well. They fell at home to Portland 2 to nothing. Their first game of the season, they tied with Seattle 1-1. This is their first road contest of the season for the Red Stars, and they have just one goal in the two games. That was scored by Lori Kalupny, and they are also without a big part of their team, Shannon Box, who has a injured knee. Yeah, I talked to Coach Dames yesterday, and, and he noted that the loss of Box is, is pretty significant. She's a good leader. She's a good player, but the team has been playing without her as she is on the national team, so she's left for Team USA duty, so they do know how to play soccer without Shannon Box. The goalies today for the Breakers, it's Ashley Phillips, the 27-year-old from Beverly, Massachusetts, played collegiately at Clemson. She started in the first game of the season. That was a 1-1 tie with the Washington Spirit. Played all 90 minutes, one goal against, faced six shots, four of those on goal, so she made three saves. And for Chicago, it is 30-year-old Erin McLeod. She has played in both games, allowed three goals, and has made seven saves, facing 
10 shots on goal. You know, the Red Stars are the, the ones who have the advantage in, in goal this season, but or today, but, you know, don't count out Ashley Phillips. She's another great player who's very consistent in, in, the, in the goal. Breakers will be in blue uniforms. All the Red Stars wear white with, call it baby blue shorts. And the Breakers will move left to right here in this first half, and we are underway from Dillboy Stadium. An excellent weather day here in the greater Boston area, and the Breakers quickly bringing it into the offensive end and then cleared away. You see them testing the defense early with a run by LaRue. She's so fast, and, and defense might be the weakness for the Chicago Red Stars today. Breakers will have a throw in on the far side. Just 30 seconds in. Back line for the Red Stars trying to clear it away. There's a shot. Gets deflected out. And that should be a corner kick for the Breakers. It will be. You know, here's a good opportunity for the Breakers to, you know, get a corner kick and, and show the Red Stars who they're playing today. Katie Sheffer will take the corner for the Breakers. Goes across the box, headed out by a Red Stars defender. It'll be a throw in for the Breakers. Throw in towards the box and headed back out again by Chicago. Kept in bounds this time. That was Moscato with the, with the header out. Leanne Sanderson taking back possession for the Breakers. Stolen away by the Red Stars. They try to get on their first offensive rush here. There you see a little lack of communication uh, between the Red Stars, and that's the biggest issue that Dane Smith's team has been having this season. They need to work together, and they need to work more as a unit, and that's how they will be successful. Ball bouncing around on the far side, played back to the defensive line for the Breakers. Switch fields up the near side. That's O'Reilly keeping it in. Played by the Red Stars, though, defensively, Winino plays it back to her goalkeeper, McLeod. Trying to keep possession was Noguera for the Breakers. Breakers do keep it. And that pass goes out. Chicago throwing. We're in the third minute here at Dillboy Stadium. Breakers and Red Stars, game number three for each team. Breakers actually had a game postponed back during the week of the tragedy at the Boston Marathon, April 20th at FC Kansas City. That game has been rescheduled. So we are three minutes in. Ashley Phillips, the keeper for the Breakers, will look to play it forward. Played into the midfield area. Good communication right there by Phillips, taking charge and, and going for that ball. Phillips will take care of it right now, playing her second game of the season. Bouncing around off the head of Motts. And the Red Stars take it. Right to left offensively, trying to lead it ahead to Bywaters. Breakers defense, though, got back in time, and Phillips stepped up. Keep an eye on Bywaters today. She was the first round draft pick, um, first of the first round, and, and she's a player that should be making a lot of runs today. She should be making the splash for the Red Stars today, and, and she's someone that they're very excited about. They fight for the ball along the far side. Kicked up into the air. Comes down to Bywaters in the midfield. And back along for the Red Stars defense. Played for McLeod. McLeod will take it inside the six. And we'll look to clear it away for the Red Stars. In the fifth minute, and no score. 
I think the Breakers officially have one shot attempt, nothing on goal. The possession game is going to be key today. For the Red Stars, they can't give it up, especially you know in the in the midfield zone, as the Breakers need to keep it on their offensive end and keep peppering McLeod with shots, because that's how they're going to get through to her. Sheffer forces McLeod to clear it away. Red Stars gain possession, but offsides is Carmelina Moscata, who just celebrated her 29th birthday two days ago. Breakers will take possession here. Cat Whitehill will kick it away for the Breakers. Get a good look at the 31-year-old product of the University of North Carolina in Birmingham, Alabama. Whitehill's a great defender. She's a leader back there, and that's what the Breakers need because defense might be their, their weakest post back there. Back defensively, Dragata. Plays it up the near sideline. O'Reilly trying to go back to Dragata. Taken away, though, by Dominguez. And a foul whistled on Chicago. So the Breakers get possession back. Coming up to take the ball will be Whitehill. Whitehill's a very smart player, and she's a good distributor, so she knows that she needs to get this central for her team to have a very good opportunity to score. Towards the top of the box. Chicago, though, takes control. Breakers, though, trying to keep it in. Noguera fighting for it, taken away by Chicago. By Waters. On the near sideline, Vandenberg. Vandenberg, as it deflected out, she touched it last. Defense there by Whitehill. Or excuse me, I believe that was actually O'Reilly with the defense. You can see her showing her defensive skills off. She can score goals, but she also knows how to defend. O'Reilly, the player of the week in NWSL, with two goals last Saturday against the Western New York Flash. Sanderson. And then losing possession was Dragata, but they say it's last touched by Masser. So it'll be a breaker's throw, and O'Reilly quickly into Lohman. Lohman trying to go ahead for Shepfer, couldn't connect. And that's cleared forward. They try to center it. Breakers defense there. Sanderson takes it from Noguera. Lohman plays it back. Now up the field for O'Reilly. Quick touch. Sheffer trying to make the run. O'Reilly sends it midfield for Sanderson. That was a great ball. Sanderson going wide left to LaRue. LaRue is not able to keep it in. Sanderson put a little too much on that pass. LaRue's fast, but she couldn't catch up with that one. And I believe that'll be a throw in deep in the corner there for Chicago. So the Breakers will try to keep them in there, keep the ball inside their offensive end if possible. Red Stars, though, were able to advance it, but it's out and a Breakers throw in. Ninth minute of play. We have no score, no shots on goal yet. Dragata, near side O'Reilly, quickly trying to go back to Dragata, bad pass. O'Reilly though tracks it back down. Long lead ahead, looked like it was intended. For Dominguez. Intended for Dominguez, but too far out of her reach. Not a cloud in the sky here. Dillboy Stadium, Somerville, Massachusetts. Breakers and Red Stars, NWSL Week 3. Bywaters gets taken down. Foul on the Breakers. And then they're going to whistle this one down, I believe, do it over. Yeah, Lohman was a little too close to that kickoff. So this gives, you know, the Red Stars time to reset, as well as the Breakers to reset and make sure they mark up for this. 
This portion of today's broadcast is brought to you by TCG Network Services. Out wide right, across, gets sent wide. It's played back for Vandenberg. Vandenberg, left foot towards the center of the box. The header is up over the crossbar. So the Red Stars with an opportunity there. I think that was the first opportunity for Chicago, and, and they need to take advantage of these offensive opportunities. Yeah, again, just one goal on the season for Chicago. Lori Kalupny in the first game of the season against Seattle, a 1-1 tie. Dame sent, said that uh, Kalupny's one of his players that's a leader on this team. She's got a lot of experience, and, and she's very smart. She's a very good player. Rory Dames in his third season as the head coach of the Red Stars. Lisa Cole, head coach for the Breakers in her second year. Sanderson gives to Noguera. That was a great switch. King plays it up the left side, trying to get back to Sanderson. But a giveaway. And right. McLeod will clear it to midfield. Second ball picked up by the Red Stars. Touch ahead. King on the defense, and it goes out. And a throw-in upcoming for Chicago from Alyssa Motts, 23-year-old from Texas A&M. Breakers take control of the throw-in. Sanderson goes between the legs of Osborne there and continues with it up the middle for LaRue. LaRue looking to do something with it. That's actually O'Reilly over on that far side. O'Reilly switching to the left side now. We want to thank our spotter here in the box for helping us locate some of the numbers, especially on that far side with the setting sun. This is Dragata, much easier to see on the near side here. Turnover, and the Red Stars take control. Winino. Now this is Masser. It'll be a throw in from Masser. 27-year-old forward from the University of Illinois. Masser looking across it, and it's poked away by Dragata. Another throw in here for the Red Stars. We are in the 13th minute. With no score. Master gets ahead of steam to throw it in. Headed away by the breakers. Sent back in towards the box. And the loose ball, Phillips will track it down. That was another good commitment by Phillips. When she goes for the ball, she really goes. And that's what you have to do as a goalie. Because you can't, you know, half, Half go for it. <laughs> Can't half-heartedly go half for it. Half-heartedly go for it. I think I know what you're going to say, but not appropriate for a broadcast. Yeah. LaRue here on the near side sends it towards the Sanderson. And then going back after it, they let him play. LaRue on the right wing. Centers try for Shepfer. Not on target. Noguera gets La knocked down, and a foul will be called on the Red Stars. LaRue thought Sheffer was probably going to make a run cut more towards goal, and they didn't. That's a little miscommunication there that the breakers have to clean up. A foul whistled on Lori Kalepny. Moving up is Cat Whitehill. Whitehill was off the leg of Sanderson and taken by Chicago. Kalepny. Going to the far side, Dominguez looking to track it down for the Red Stars, but taken away by King. Dominguez has a lot of experience. She's a great player up top for the Red Stars. Ball bounces back and forth a couple of times. Sanderson up to the far side and the pass off target. In the midfield, Lohman, Sanderson. O'Reilly going after it, and again, can't reach it. Second time we've seen a pass up that left wing, just too far out in front. It was LaRue the first time, and this time O'Reilly. It'll be 
played back to Phillips. Dragata. It was a dangerous pass back by Dragata with the defender with the uh, attacker right there, but you know the breakers recovered for that from that. Here's Sheffer. Sheffer puts it into space. Larue trying to go after it, can't get to it. Trying to force a corner kick. But instead it'll be a goal kick. Great job by the defender right there. They know how dangerous LaRue can be, and it was a great job shielding the ball and letting it go out and, and having this be a, a change of possession and a goal kick. That was Juanino back there. McLeod. Noguera heads it forward for the breakers. Now Lohman plays it up into the air. Sanderson gets knocked down for behind. That'll be a foul on the Red Stars. And quickly they restart play. Try to go to the far side. O'Reilly gets it. O'Reilly. Right foot towards the goal, but playing that near post was McLeod. Good quick restart there by the Breakers. Got him that opportunity. Yeah, they're just trying to catch the Red Stars off balance and try and get a good shot off. That'll be out and a throw in for Chicago. Top of the box there, sent back out. Now across from the right side, and Phillips comes out again. And is the aggressive goalkeeper going out there to make the catch herself, not taking any chances. So far, that aggressiveness has been successful for her, so hopefully she can keep that up and she can keep stopping these shots. That'll go straight out of bounds, though, from Phillips. And so Chicago will have a throw in here on the near side by Waters. Quickly gets it in. By Waters on the left side. Tricky with the ball, trying to go by Dragata, and it goes out. And it'll be a goal kick for Phillips. So the defense there by Dragata, very good. 22 year old of the University of Florida, Tampa, Florida as well. She's actually taking over that outside back position because uh, Bianca Diagostino is out for the season. So they're testing Dragata, and she's so far so good, lived up to that. Um, test. Yeah, D'Agostino out for the season. Kaya Simon was probable coming into today's game. She obviously has not started. And Rion Wilkinson out for the Breakers with a right hamstring strain. So some injuries for the Breakers and they picked up a new defenseman, Melinda McCardo from the Western New York Flash couple of days ago. 18 minutes in, no score, Breakers and Red Stars. Scott Sudikoff alongside Maddie Sattler, Dillboy Stadium in Somerville, Massachusetts. We thank you for tuning in. So Rob far, we haven't seen any spectacular opportunities for either team. They've they had some runs, they've had some shots, but nothing that really stands out in this game so far. Breakers have tried a couple times to utilize that left wing, but to no avail. as Whitehill kicks that out of bounds. It's easy to spot a Whitehill. She's got those fluorescent orange spikes on. Played back dangerously. Red Stars trying to center it. And again, Phillips coming out and gets hit pretty hard by I think her teammate there, Whitehill. Another good save by uh, Phillips. She, she's so good at committing to that. So it's kicked away by Phillips. It's headed up the near side and it'll be tracked down by Winino, plays it for McLeod. Turns it to Winino, clears it up for the breakers. Get possession back, Noguera touches it for LaRue. LaRue left foot to Sanderson. Sanderson quickly to Sheffer, an opportunity here. Sheffer to the far post and she scores. Katie Sheffer gets on the board with her first of the season. And the Breakers lead the Red Stars one to nothing. 
And just a few moments ago, Maddie, you were saying no uh, spectacular opportunities. That was one, and the breakers cash in. That was a great run by Sheffer and, and such good communication by the team, just seeing, um, noticing her make that run behind the defender and, and scoring to give her team the one nothing lead. And all the momentum right now is in the breakers' favor. That comes in the 20th minute for Katie Sheffer. Her first of the season, she had seven last year with the Breakers, 24-year-old from Penn State University in Waterford, Connecticut. So one nothing. the Breakers on top. Just a beautiful play and finish. And McLeod, right where she wanted her, and tucked it into the far post side netting. Yeah, Sheffer's a scoring threat up there. They can't just uh, guard LaRue up there because with Sheffer and um, she was the second on the team in scoring last year. So she's going to be testing the defense today as well, as now we saw right there. Now let's see if the Red Stars can answer. Again, they only have one goal through two games this season. Breakers with their fourth of the season. Here's Leslie Osborne, or excuse me, that's Vandenberg. Osborne is 12, Vandenberg 13. This is Osborne, the former breaker. Osborne spent three seasons with the breakers. To the top of the box. Dominguez. Was trying to play it forward, take it away, Noguera on the far side for King. For the Red Stars right now, they, they can't collapse mentally. This is what Dame said they've struggled with, is after getting down, they've you know, had these mental lapses and they can't do that today because if they do, they're gonna see themselves down two nothing shortly. Near side, Dragata. Forward for LaRue, has trouble with it, taken away by Vandenberg. Vandenberg in the midfield. And in soccer, these next five minutes are also very important. And offsides was Kalupni. So the Breakers will take possession. 23rd minute, one nothing Breakers on the 20th minute goal scored by Katie Sheffer. Whitehill will do the honors on the far side of the field. If you've noticed from the first game here, they've added more stands on that far side of the field, and those are pretty much packed as well as are the stands here on the near side. And those fans over there have the benefit of not looking into the sun. Yeah, they got their backs to the sun, but we won't harp on that. We are doing our best fighting through it, and the Breakers have a one nothing lead. 23 minutes in, Noguera. Played back for Tregata. Lohman slides it forward, trying to go to LaRue. It was off target. Juanino will play it back for McLeod. McLeod left foots it ahead. It's stolen momentarily by Sheffer. That was almost a heart in your throat moment for the Red Stars. Those mistakes McLeod cannot make or else she's going to pay for it, obviously, and she's lucky that Shepard didn't get a better touch on that. Not only did it surprise her, it surprised us up here as well. Didn't expect to see that potential turnover in the making. On the near side, Dragata sends it towards the box, headed up into the air by the Red Stars. And O'Reilly will win a corner kick for the Breakers. It's our second corner kick of the afternoon, or evening. Early evening. Early evening. I think we've, I think we've graduated into evening, though, I guess, officially. Can't tell by the weather here. Shepfer with the corner into the middle of the box. Second ball taken by Chicago momentarily. This is Whitehill, it's pinched all the way up. Sanderson sending it, can't connect with O'Reilly. 
That was a good run in by King too. She surprised the defender or the Red Stars defense because they weren't expecting her to run up either. And, and there's the, a goal right there. And the Breakers take a 2-0 lead. The Boston Breakers goal to go up 2-0. And that officially coming in the 26th minute, Mariah Noguera gets on the board. That was just McLeod out of place, and uh, Noguera had a nice little header in to score that one. Thank you to Maddie for taking the play-by-play -play for a brief moment there after I was slightly distracted. <laughs> it's 2-0 Breakers. And that's Noguera's first goal of the season. I think most people that are watching that are Breakers fans are just happy to see the goal, and they don't mind that I missed the play-by-play -play call there. So the Breakers with two goals in the first 26 minutes of action. And obviously a big mountain to climb now for the Red Stars. We've already chronicled enough. They're scoring woes so far. Just one goal in two games. That'll be sent out by LaRue. So it'll be a throw-in. In the 27th minute of action. So the goal officially in the 26th minute for Mariah Noguera. 22-year-old midfielder. Certainly a smart player. She's from Stanford. Here's LaRue streaking up the near side. Centers it. Knocked away. Lohman gives it up. Back on the outside. LaRue. Crosses it to the far side, and it goes out off the Red Stars and another corner kick. Shepard's done a great job this, this evening taking these corner kicks. She's put it right central where McLeod can't get to it, but it can and get to one of her players. Shepard, a shorter one there, and goes out off the Red Stars. So another corner kick. This will be number five coming up for the Breakers. Thank you to our statistician, Maddie Sattler. Two nothing Breakers. That's played back, Sanderson. That wasn't a great, great corner by Shepherd, but. Dangerous opportunity there. And nice slide tackle to knock it away by Dragata. Red Stars throw in Vandenberg. You see Moscato back on the defense for the Red Stars and she's really going to be the key to them. She's had a lot of experience with Team Canada, a lot of international experience, and, and she's got to be a leader back there for the defense, especially now that the Red Stars are down to nothing. Whitehill will play it all the way to the goal line there. Easy catch for Aaron McLeod. It wasn't a bad idea. She had Noguera and LaRue up there making runs, but her, her kick was a little too close to the goal. McLeod will fire it away. Second ball taken by the Red Stars. Looking for a cross opportunity, and a, again, the defense from the Breakers. That's Whitehill that was knocking Kalupni, it away. Kalupni on the other side. Good 
Kolobny brings a lot of experience, and she's a smart player too, but recent concussions have prevented her from, from playing on the international scene since 2009. She debuted back in 2001 with the U.S. national team. We have a corner kick coming here for Chicago. This is Vandenberg. Left foots it across the box. And it'll be cleared out. Let's see if it's momentarily or not. It's out off the Red Stars, and the Breakers a chance now to clear their defensive end. That was Noguera in the defensive end too, so she's been all over the place today. Dragata with the throw in. 31st minute of action, two nothing Breakers, Shepfer and Noguera. The goal scorers for the Breakers. Looking for their first win at home this year. Phillips will come out and make that catch easily. Seems like the Red Stars are trying to do a little too much, just force it a little too much. They need to slow down and just play the game, stick to their game plan because they do have talent, especially up on the offensive end of the field. This is the first of two meetings between these two teams this season. They'll play in Chicago on June the 9th. Breakers be on the road for their next matchup next Saturday at the Washington Spirit. Vandenberg will play it back. Juanino sends it to space. And Vandenberg couldn't track it down. Throw in for the Breakers. And Noguera is knocked down there. Foul on Chicago. So the Breakers take possession back. Cat Whitehill lines things up, waits for her teammates to set. In the middle of the field, Sanderson misses the header. It finds its way on the left wing. Oh, good flick, but. And that shot from O'Reilly just a bit wide and high. But O'Reilly there on that left wing had space and an opportunity looking for her third goal of the season. A good flick by LaRue to O'Reilly. The two of them have played together many times, especially with um, Team USA. Throw in on the far side, Julie King for Sanderson. Sanderson gets it up for LaRue, turns it back. Breakers will set things up from the defensive line. Noguera plays keep away from Kalupni. Lohman back for Whitehill. Whitehill will send it forward, but intercepted by the Red Stars. 34th minute of play, and as you see on your screen, 2-0, the Breakers. Shepfer in the 20th minute. And Noguera in the 26th minute for the Breakers. The Red Stars in this game in terms of opportunities, one shot, but not on goal. Winino will head it to her teammate McLeod. And again, Chicago will look to start a breakout up the field. Trying to obviously get more offensively here. Just mentioned just the one shot. Winino comes from Colorado, and she brings a lot of experience as far as playing with various professional teams. She spent some time with the Red Stars and and um, even up in Europe with Germany team Germ or with a club team in Germany. And yesterday was her birthday. Yesterday was her birthday. I think that was your overall point. Yesterday, <laughs> turning 26 years old. Breakers possession. Dragata trying to hook up there with Sanderson. Dragata regains possession, gives to Shepfer. Left foot to the middle of the field, got deflected away. 
there was some miscommunication there. I think Sanderson and O'Reilly both uh, thought the other was going to be in the middle to get that pass. Dominguez, her pass goes right off of Lohman. Lohman right in the way there. Lohman back for Noguera. Trying to connect with Sanderson again, but knocked away. Still played by the breakers. Whitehill skies it into the air. Head to the middle of the field. Sheffer. Quick touch for Sanderson, and she cannot get to it, but the Red Stars will kick it out. And a throw in upcoming for the Breakers. Large crowd here, but sort of quiet, even with the 2-0 Breakers lead. As the Red Stars take it forward in transition, LaRue coming all the way up to play defense, and obviously saw her speed on display right there. Ball pinballed around, and the breakers take it. Lohman. Comes back to Vandenberg. Vandenberg return on the near side for Kolopny. Kolopny, the lone goal score for the Red Stars this season. Kolopny trying to send it towards the near post. Got headed back. Kolopny will let it trickle out, keeping it away from Dragata. Throw in for the Red Stars. 37th minute of play, 2-0 breakers. A quick throw in, Vandenberg. And they're going to call an offsides on Chicago. That's the third offsides call, I believe, by the Red Stars this afternoon, this evening. That's a tough one to have when you're so in far in so deep there. Tough to be offsides. It seems like they're trying to force it a little too much and you just slow it down and keep to their strategy. That's so important in, in this game. Noguera gets knocked down from behind. They play on. Lohman. Middle of the field, Sanderson. Sanderson, near side for O'Reilly. O'Reilly trying to send it into space for, I she guess for LaRue, but LaRue not even close. Yeah, she thought LaRue was gonna be making that run and, and LaRue actually didn't, so that was just an easy stop for McLeod. Left foot forward, it connects with Dominguez. Dominguez trying to get a shot off with the left foot, trying to go to far post, but Phillips makes the save. Phillips read it. So the first shot on goal for Chicago here today, stopped a, by Phillips. It was a good effort by Dominguez to get, try and get around, to get around uh, um, Whitehill, but you know Phillips has been big in the goal and she got big there and made that save. Juanino gives it up back for Moscato. Now on the far side. This portion of today's broadcast brought to you by WeGotSoccer.com. As Phillips will wait for her teammates to set things up. Her squad up by two in the 39th minute. Yeah, you'll see Boston try and slow this game down a bit and take some time off. A 2-0 lead, you know, they always say it's a dangerous lead, but it is significant because they know that the Red Stars have had um, trouble scoring this season. So it's good for them to just take their time and, and make their plays. Whitehill will set things up for the Breakers. Whitehill sends it away at the top of the box and coming up to grab it is McLeod. She'll quickly throw it ahead. That's intercepted by King. King for Whitehill. Played back for Phillips. 
She launches it out of bounds. So a couple of times in this game, Phillips with a errant, few errant kicks, but at the very least, it's back towards the midfield. And that goes out off of LaRue. Quick throw in for Chicago. And try to set it ahead and not enough space, not enough speed to track it down for O'Reilly. Also McLeod was coming up. Throw in now for the breakers. 41st minute of play. LaRue throws it up the far side. Chicago trying to clear the end. Lohman has it taken away, though. Red Stars looking for some offensive pressure. They only have one shot on goal. And it race to the corner, and it's out off the breakers, and that'll be a corner kick for Chicago. Goal kick, excuse me. So a goal kick. And again, Phillips coming out to play it, and we'll grab it. Versus Fields with it. Dragata gets to O'Reilly quickly back. Dragata. That was not a great first touch by Dragata. Breakers still almost tracked it down. Red Stars with possession by Waters. Centering attempt, headed into the air, out of the box. Loose in the midfield, that's LaRue. And Breakers now, at that point we're surrounding the ball, but Chicago takes it, there's a shot, but it's gonna be wide to the far post. The Red Stars haven't had too, too many chances today, and um, that's attributed to the, the defense, which has very, has, you know, become stronger so far this season for the Breakers. We're in the 43rd minute, foul whistled on Chicago. Whitehill, as she normally does, comes up to do the honors. I guess those aren't really orange. Those look more like pink with that camera angle here. That was a great ball. Dragata made a, a great run down the side. And that pass. McLeod had trouble with it, and Chicago has to clear it out to lead to a corner kick. So McLeod there read it well, had it, but couldn't squeeze it. The Red Stars were not expecting Dragata to be making that run down the side. She was wide open. So corner kick, O'Reilly quickly in, gets it back. O'Reilly from the near side, sends it into the middle of the box. It's punched out. Sanderson will track it down for the breakers. 44th minute, first half, O'Reilly. Sends it to space. Picked up by Shepfer. She scored a goal in the 20th minute. Knocked out by Vandenberg, a throw in for Shepfer. That goes out of bounds. O'Reilly couldn't control. Chicago throw in. And that goes up over the head of Mots. And the breakers. Dragata. Going to keep the pressure on for Boston. Stolen away momentarily. McNeil was trying to push up with the ball. Had it ripped away by Chicago. 45th minute. I haven't seen any 
announcement on stoppage time here in this first half. Yeah, we didn't have we didn't have much. Chicago trying to do something here in the waning moments of the first half. Just one minute of additional time announced. Well, Chicago obviously heard that announcement. We'll try to force the issue potentially. Vandenberg and the defense there by O'Reilly. So they we're into stoppage time. The Red Stars can't get frantic though because you know there's still another half of soccer to be played and if they make any mental mistakes now it'll, it could cost them a, a third goal. Shepfer for O'Reilly looking for a cross and McLeod there to intercept it. Whitehill. Not too much time remaining. Whitehill will take it up herself and Shepfer was like knocked off play a bit there and couldn't get to it. Long lead, taken away by Dragata. Noguera scored the second goal in the 26th minute for the Breakers. Final seconds of this first half goes out of the reach of Sanderson. Throw in for Chicago. And that will do it in the first half. So 45 minutes in the books and the Breakers have a two nothing lead. Scoring in the 20th minute, Katie Schepfer, and then just six minutes later, it was Mariah Noguera. And so the Breakers with a 2-0 halftime lead here at Dillboy Stadium. Coach uh, Cole has to be pleased with this effort. You know, her team has been very working very well together, communicating pretty well. A couple of lapses here and there, but for the most part, the Breakers have been doing a great job, especially on offense. We'll take a break here at halftime, be back in a couple minutes, and have the second half of action for you. Once again, the score at halftime, the Breakers 2 and the Red Stars 0. Welcome back to Dillboy Stadium. We're at halftime with the score to the Boston Breakers 2 and the Chicago Red Stars nothing. Scott Sudikoff alongside Maddie Sattler. And in that first half of play, obviously two goals scored for, for the Breakers. The first one coming in the 20th minute on just a, a beautiful play. Katie Shepfer scoring from Leanne Sanderson. And obviously early in the season, but probably the prettiest goal the Breakers have had this year. Yeah, definitely. It was a great ball by Sanderson and it was a great finish by Shepard for, for her first goal of the season. Yeah, Shepard's first goal of the season. Sanderson picking up her second assist of the season. Sanderson had the game-winning assist last Saturday in the 2-1 victory over the Western New York Flash. So the first goal of the season for Shepard. She had seven a year ago. Let's take a look at that first goal from Shepard and see how pretty it actually was. As we saw LaRue with a quick touch to Sanderson and then finding Shepard with a lot of space. And she went to the far post, side netting, to score it for the Breakers. And that's how they got the one nothing lead in the 20th minute of play. The second goal coming, uh, I believe, officially in the 25th minute. That was from Mariah Noguera, the 22-year-old, scoring her first goal of the season. And she scored that one off an assist by Heather O'Reilly. So Heather O'Reilly had two goals last Saturday, uh, chips in with an assist here today, and obviously she's been playing very well the last couple of weeks. Yeah, she's such a dynamic player, and she's such a scoring threat. We've also seen her make some good defensive plays, so she's an all-around player, and she's, you know, the Breakers are very lucky that they're playing. she's playing on their team. Let's take a look at that goal from Mariah Noguera. 22-year-old midfielder from Stanford University and from Westminster, California. So here we take a look at it. It came off of a corner kick from Katie Sheffer. It was quickly into O'Reilly. And then right to the middle, the header by Noguera trickled by McLeod for the second goal of the game for the Breakers, and that is how they lead two to nothing. Taking a look at the first half stats, the Breakers outshot Chicago six to three. Shots on goal were four to one, so McLeod made two saves in the first half for the Red Stars, one save for Ashley Phillips. Breakers had six quarter kicks, Chicago just one. Four fouls whistled all on Chicago, 
Also a pair of offsides on the Red Stars, none on the Breakers. And Coach James, I'm sure, in the locker room was a little disappointed in his team. He mentioned um, yesterday when I spoke with him that the key was to stay tough mentally and stay together as a team, and they really haven't done that. Second half has begun. The Breakers now move right to left here in the second in their blue uniform, Chicago in the white. So the Red Stars see if they can strike early potentially and get right back in this game. There's a turnover taken by the Breakers into space. O'Reilly looking to send it forward. Center to LaRue who got knocked down and played away by the Red Stars. It'll be a throw in. Clean play there for Chicago, good defense. O'Reilly had too much space over there on that side though. She had time to make a good cross. Joe Dragata will throw in on the far sideline and it gets ricocheted right back out of bounds by the Breakers. It'll be a Chicago throw in. The two goal deficit is a lot for the Red Stars, especially since they've only scored one goal so far this season. So there's a lot of work for them to do in this game. Sanderson working against Osborne gives it up. Now it comes back to the middle. LaRue fighting for it, able to get through with it, looking for a shot. Sends it away, up high, and a save by McLeod. Just had it squirt out of her hands for a moment and then made the second play on it. So that good. shot by LaRue almost perfectly placed. Yeah, it was a good move by her too to get past the defender and she's so quick and she's so explosive up there and that was you know, a great job by her to try and generate some offense. Third save for McLeod here tonight. On the far side, Chicago trying to center it. Kicked away by Whitehill. Now playing it is Kalupny. Kalupny touches forward. Bywaters. Bywaters gets by the defender. Dragata and trying to send it across. It does go all the way to the corner. Centering pass headed by King. Sent in the air by Lohman. Ball won by Sanderson. Sanderson with a very tricky move, trying to get away from Alyssa Motts. It was a good switch, too, by the Breakers, and trying to catch the Red Stars in transition. Chicago has it. Left foot forward into space. Dominguez trying to get to it, and gets sent out as Phillips coming far out off her line to make that play. Yeah, she came all the way out for that one. She's, you know, really been aggressive this game. She's definitely kept that aggressive nature from the start of this game. It's helped her get a couple of saves and really quell another few opportunities as well. Dragata on the defense, the cross headed away by King. Back out towards midfield, Vandenberg. Played back Moscato, Moscato. Sending it forward, but that's gonna be offsides. Masser offsides. My coach used to always tell me, sometimes an offsides call isn't the worst thing. It just shows you're being aggressive and trying to generate offense, and that's what the Red Stars need to do right now. The Breakers were guilty of a bunch of offsides last week. They had five offsides calls, and we're talking in the pre-pre-game, the off-air pre-game about how that showed that the Breakers were trying to, just as you said, kind of get more offensive opportunities, take some chances, utilize their speed on the front line. 50th minute of the play, Breakers two, Chicago nothing. That's LaRue and she takes that shot after the whistle, after the offsides. As we were just, we we're talking about. LaRue offsides, which she was just a hint offside, but she's so dangerous and, and she's scary. It has to be careful with that shot after the whistle, but it was pretty quick compared to the whistle. I don't think there was any intent to there from LaRue. Only intent to score a goal, that is. Yeah, nothing malicious with that. 
Dominguez having trouble with it. Marked by Lohman. Tries to spin away. Picked up by, that is Vandenberg. Vandenberg fighting against Sheffer and O'Reilly. Bumping with Sheffer, and now Sheffer the throw in. She'll leave it instead. Yeah, now the breakers are just going to take some time and regroup and, and really try and, you know, let this game play out. One other game in the NWSL kicking off right about now. It's Portland and Washington. And later, FC Kansas City visiting Seattle Reign. We had one match earlier this week that was on Wednesday, Western New York beating Sky Blue two to one. I believe Abby Wambach had the game winning goal in that one for Western New York coming back from a head injury. She missed the game against the Breakers last Saturday. And a corner kick upcoming here for Chicago. On the offensive play by Kalupni. Yeah, this is just their second corner kick of the game. Kalupni will do the honors. Kalupni has the lone goal of the Chicago season. Again, that was game one, a 1-1 one -one draw with Seattle. Send it to the box, and the header, it's saved by Phillips. Wow. <laughs> that was a great save by Phillips. She's having a great game. That was just kind of a reaction to the ball being hit right in her face. Well, great job just tracking the ball. She was at the right place right there at it. the right time. A lot of times with all the bodies in front, you can lose it. All the screens being set. And she's lucky it went up over the goal and not up into the goal. You're going to be able to punch it with authority out of the way. Another opportunity for Chicago. They try the same type of play. And the header goes out. I believe that was Winino coming all the way up from her defensive line and heading that out. It'll be a goal kick for Phillips, who has a smile on her face, and she should after that save. You know, these are some good opportunities for the Red Stars. These are what they need to keep happening. They need to try to get, take advantage of these offensive chances because they haven't had very many this game. Ball bounces around, played up the far side, tracking it down. O'Reilly, a lot of speed in the middle. Sanderson trickles all the way through to LaRue, back to Noguera, taken away. I don't know if LaRue was expecting that ball to go through. But she was wide open on that side. Lohman, strong on the ball. Far side for Dragata, touches for Sanderson. Sends it out wide, O'Reilly. O'Reilly being marked by Vandenberg, still with it. O'Reilly left foot, centering to LaRue. Now King, or excuse me, that was King, that was correct. Yeah. But Chicago coming back with it, Dominguez. And way off sides there is Bywaters. Bywaters and Dominguez are a good duo up top. You know, Dominguez has the experience, and Bywaters is a, the exciting rookie, but, you know, they need to work together, and the team needs to work on trying to get them the ball. LaRue heads it into space, trying to track it down, and it's out. And a goal kick for Aaron McLeod. Breakers looking for their first win at home this year, season. They tied back on the 14th of April against the Washington Spirit, 1-1. And then winning on the road last Saturday against the Western New York Flash, 2-1. Chicago playing in their first road contest of the season. They are back on the road just four days from now at Sky Blue FC. Out of bounds, throw in for the Breakers. Here is LaRue. looking for space. Sends it towards the corner for Sanderson. Quick touch. Sanderson gets it back. LaRue now into the box. Noguera and a save by McLeod. Noguera looking for her second 
of the night and very similar to that save from Phillips earlier on a header just being able to punch it out a ref reflex type of save and now a corner kick for Katie Schepfer and the Breakers. That was a great run by Nogara and she's having a great game today. Um, you know she almost had another one right there. She's hungry for, for goals. Nogara playing in her second game of the season. Schepfer a long corner to the poster trying to go to that far post and obviously as you can see bouncing off the crossbar and out. So a goal kick for Chicago. So McLeod up to the task there with a big save. Yeah McLeod's a, a great goalie. She's on the Canadian national team. She's you know been playing for them since 2008 and she's got a lot of international experience as well so she's got to be a leader back there. It's just difficult when you have all these players taking a lot of shots. She's faced six shots on goal and has made four saves. McLeod will play this one. Out of bounds on the far side. Could not connect with her teammate. Sheffer will go over to throw it in. And that lack of communication has been, you know, the story of the game for the Red Stars. They haven't been able to match up on the passes, and, and that's really hurt them. And they call it offsides. And then Sanderson gets tripped up after the fact. She gets up and appears to be okay as Winino will play it back for McLeod. 57th minute of action, 2-0 breakers. They scored in the 20th minute, Katie Schepfer from Leanne Sanderson. And then in the 25th minute, Mariah Noguera from Heather O'Reilly on a header, just as she tried to score a few moments ago as well. Going to get it for the breakers is Whitehill. And then sends it off the feet of Dominguez. Breakers throw in Julie King. Playing her second game. Did not play on opening night. Played 14 games a year ago for the Breakers. Nine starts. Yeah, she comes from Auburn University where she played four years for them and then walked onto the basketball team. The Trigada there shaking up a bit. Back up on her feet though. Yeah, King. Soccer star, and then as you said, just walking on to that Lady Tigers basketball team. When Nino trying to play it for the Red Stars, Breakers take control. Sanderson. Sanderson has it ripped away by Leslie Osborne. Dominguez, middle of the field against Whitehill, and someone has a handful of jersey, and that was Dominguez who. I'm not a lip reader, but I could tell by the just the body language there. I had a few words for Whitehill, and definitely not pleasantries. Yeah, we haven't really mentioned the rivalry between these two teams. Not that it's a huge rivalry, but the Chicago Red Stars uh, were the reason the Breakers were knocked out of the playoffs last year. Yeah, the Red Stars beating the Breakers in the semifinals a year ago in the PSL Elite. Breakers were 11-3-0 last season. The best record in the history of the club. Chicago will get a corner kick here after that cross was knocked out by Lohman. Chicago had an opportunity from the other side on their last corner kick. And Ashley Phillips made a fantastic save. Let's see what Chicago tries to do here. Vandenberg will take the kick. Vandenberg. But Phillips there, as she's been all night, able to really just cut the ball off at the pass with an aggressive play. Sanderson, too far ahead. Or LaRue or Sheffer, and McLeod takes possession. Sanderson was trying to catch the Red Stars in transition because most of the team was on the other half of the field. Breakers will play their next two matches on the road at Washington next Saturday, and then two weeks from today at FC Kansas City. They return here to Dillboy Stadium on the 25th of May to play Washington once again. That'll be the third match 
second here. Yeah, those teams are gonna be real familiar with each other. Some space for Bywaters and she scores. And Chicago gets on the board. So just like that, Chicago right back in the contest. That was a good run by Bywater. She's so quick and, and, and she's explosive. And that's what the Red Stars really need right now is someone to light a flame and, and tell them to get going. So the lead cut in half, two to one. And things have certainly changed. Just like that, the goal from Bywaters. Now let's see overlap. if the breakers can answer. Good overlap by Dragata right down that side. Dragata for LaRue, the header and a save by McLeod. Outstretching her hands to make the save as LaRue trying to send it to that far post. McLeod had it covered. An excellent delivery there from Dragata. Yeah, McLeod hasn't let up. You know, she let two goals in, but she's locked it in since then. And that was a great save by her. Lohman takes for the breakers. We can take a look at that goal from Bywaters. And plenty of space, great run. And then not much Phillips could do. She guessed one way and it went the other. That was a good uh, assist too to Kolopny. So Bywaters scores her first goal of the season, Zakia Bywaters. In the 61st minute, 21-year-old midfielder from UCLA. And the first pick of the draft, too, so she's got a lot to prove. The uh, Red Stars now trying to capitalize on some momentum. Masser into the box. And gets knocked away. Tracking it down is Rachel Kwan. And that's up on top of the net. So not a good cross there from Kwan. And the Breakers will have a goal kick. For the Breakers defensively, they can't panic. And, you know, they got to get back into their routine, get back into their mindset, and, and just lock it in like they have been for most of this game. Headed right back for Chicago. Almost came loose for Bywaters again. Nobody taking possession at the moment. Ball staying up in the air. This is Whitehill. Grabs it for the breakers, ahead for LaRue. LaRue being bumped by Quan. Plays it back for King. Now Ford, Schepfer. Touch for Noguera up the near sideline for LaRue. LaRue into space. O'Reilly going to track it down. She's on sides, and it's sent out of play by Winino. Goal, excuse me, corner kick upcoming. Breakers are trying to answer that goal in the 61st minute by Chicago. Getting ready to do the honors. Heather O'Reilly has an assist in this game. She's taking her time here, making sure she gets the perfect kickoff. Big opportunity for the Breakers to get that goal right back. To the far side, and the header is wide. I think that was King there. That was Julie King coming all the way up. Tonight's attendance, the ninth straight sellout here for the Breakers. 3,113, and it's the largest crowd in Breakers history. And so good thing they added the extra stands on that far side of the field, and they are able to fill them up. 3,113 here for the Breakers here this evening. Ninth consecutive sellout, and we don't expect that sellout streak to end anytime soon. Yeah, it's a great you know game for the fans. It's a great chance for them to see their favorite players, and and they do a great job. The league does a great job having the players interact too with the fans with post game interviews. And and these uh, are legitimate sellouts, not Boston Red Sox type sellouts. <laughs> and as this goes out, it'll be a throw in for the Breakers. Chicago has gotten on the board in the 61st minute. Zakia by Waters. Really can't blame Ashley Phillips for that one at all. It was one on one. Had to guess one way and it just was wrong. All right, make that King coming all the way up. Lohman will take control for the breakers. And try to give to a teammate. Goes out, throw in here for Chicago. 
This portion of the broadcast brought to you by TCG Network Services. Implementing technology that empowers people. TCG Network Services. You can visit tcgns.com for more information. 66th minute. Kick here coming from Carmelina Moscato. Just celebrated her 29th birthday two days ago. Ball is loose and picked up inside the 18 by Phillips. She'll direct traffic. Her team on top, two to one. It's bounced around Chicago, taking control. Trying to put it through a seam there. Bywaters picks it up. On the far side. Cross attempt and knocking it away. Loman. Trigada could not keep it in on the sideline. And a throw in for Chicago quickly. It goes into Kalupni. Gets it back from Dominguez. Kalupni bumps with O'Reilly. And then O'Reilly rockets it off Kalupni to get the throw in. Good job defensively by O'Reilly to make sure that the breakers could maintain possession of that. The fans have started the wave here. Trying to start the wave, although it's tough when you don't have the uh, end zone stands for it to connect. Once one part of the stands doesn't know when to pick it up. Throw in upcoming here for Dragada. I believe there's a substitution coming in. Out. Kaya Simon onto the field for the Breakers. So that's a good sign. Simon in for Sheffer in the 67th minute. Simon was probable for the game. So we thought we'd see her. She gets into the game in the 67th minute. And well, her team on top, 2-1. to one. Yeah, So si Sheffer sits down with the goal. Simon on top with a Rue is very dangerous. She led the team. Simon led the team last year in scoring, so... They're obviously trying to be more offensive in attack. Simon missed that game last week against the Western New York Flash. Getting back on the field here a week later. And that also gives Shep for a break. She's been working hard today and making a lot of runs, so. You know, they want to keep her fresh and keep her going. Yeah, longer season this year with 22 game schedule. Play back for Sanderson. Sanderson. Slide tackle momentarily taken away and then fully gained by Chicago. Another giveaway and the Breakers regain possession. Noguera plays back for Dragata. Dragata chips it forward. It ricochets right to LaRue. LaRue, no space for a shot. Instead of forcing something, we'll set it back out. Quick give and go with O'Reilly. Couldn't connect. And then it goes out. As that was Winino on the defense for Chicago. Goal kick here for the Red Stars and Aaron McLeod. It was come to play today unofficially with, I believe, four saves. As that will bounce out of bounds. Throw in here for Chicago. 70th minute of play. Two to one, the Breakers on top. Both of their goals coming in the first half in the 20th and the 26th minute. And Chicago scoring here in the 61st minute. Up the sideline, Simon with space, a lot of room. Kaya Simon waiting, shooting, and a save by McLeod. Loose ball is cleared out of that the box by the defense. It wasn't a great shot by Simon. I think she needed to go a uh, harder strike and, and try and elevate that over the keeper's head into the far post. But, you know, it was a good chance. It was a good run by her. So we'll see what she can do now. She had so much time there to set something up. It's almost... Seems as if she waited 
just a bit yeah, too long. She gave McLeod time to, to get her foot, her feet set. LaRue will throw it in. So McLeod now with five saves. And McLeod goes up against that one, coming off her line. Throws it forward, intercepted by King. So the breakers just continue with the pressure. The crowd started to get back into it, though, after that shot. Yeah, they were surprisingly quiet after a quick two-goal lead for the Breakers. They sort of settled into having that lead and looked like the Breakers would sail to a victory. But Chicago getting on the board. Break, uh, the Red Stars haven't fully taken advantage of that goal, though. They didn't really ride the momentum as much as they would have liked to. The Breakers have regained that part of the game. Lauren Foltz has checked in for Chicago. And Ella Masser has taken a seat. Coming at the 70th minute. So each team with one substitution thus far. Yeah, Foltz is an experienced player. She spent some time on the U17, U20, and U23 team. Played collegiately at Notre Dame, 24 years old. He makes the pass right there. Trying to connect there. That's, I thought they, I believe they said the substitution was master, but I think she's still out there. I'll have to double check that. I see three on the field, so I'll know for a fact that master's still out there. I don't think master was expecting to get that ball, so she didn't really get a good touch on it. Throw in from Vandenberg. Two folks, and another throw in upcoming. Vandenberg will do it again. Folks being double teamed, trying to throw it towards the net, and no opportunity there, and a goal kick for Phillips. Seventy third minute. Breakers looking for their second win of the season. No losses thus far, one tie. Chicago is 0-1-1. And now a chance. And the defense from behind knocking it away. Kia McNeil. But it does lead to a corner kick. On the offense there was Lori Kolupny. Yeah, but that wasn't a bad defensive stop because otherwise uh, Kolupny would have had a straight shot to goal. Lupney will take the corner kick. The shot blocked. Osborne's shot didn't get through. Sent back in. Phillips trying to punch it out. Lohman will kick it out. Red Stars try to regroup. Yeah, you see the breakers trying to push up too and get the Red Stars to be all sides. Bywaters, the goal scorer for the Red Stars. Reverses fields with it or attempts to, and then Simon heads it away. King colliding there with Masser. Red Stars trying to keep the pressure on. LaRue will set it up forward. She'll try to track it down herself, but cannot do so. And then she does, takes it away from Winino. And LaRue one on one with McLeod. The shot and a goal. Sydney LaRue makes it 3 1 breakers. And you can just see LaRue is so dynamic. She's so scary. She's fast. And she took that and she was gone. Sydney LaRue sent that up the sideline, tracked it down herself. Well, it looked like when Nino was there, she was. But then she got tripped up with the ball. LaRue then off to the races and not much that Aaron McLeod could do. LaRue scores her second goal of the season, both here at home. That goal coming in the 74th minute. 3-1 yeah. breakers. You know, she just brings such a power to this offense and really, you know, really makes the team that much more scary up top. Quan's cross intercepted by Phillips. Let's take a look at that goal from Sydney LaRue, her second of the season. Everybody's trailing her. McLeod has to come out, do all she can, and 
One of the easier goals that LaRue will probably have in her career. Moscato was upset with herself for that one too. So LaRue, the 22-year-old, soon to be 23, will celebrate her birthday in three days. And she celebrates here with her second goal of the season. She has a lot of international experience too. She played in the Olympics. You know, she's played um, with Team USA for a while. 27 games in 2012 with the USA women's national team. Scored 14 goals, which is a record for most as a substitute. portion of the broadcast brought to you by We Got Soccer. For more information, visit wegotsoccer.com. As Phillips bobbles that, it's loose for Folks. Trying to get back. The Breakers defense able to come back and we have an offsides guard the line, but too. offsides anyways. And if you compare these two lineups, you know, the Breakers have O'Reilly, they have LaRue, they have these explosive players, and the Red Stars are kind of lacking that up top. It, it has to do with the allocation of the Team USA players, but, you know, that means the Red Stars have to work that much harder and have to work together as a unit, and, and that's where, you know, they're lacking. Seventy-seventh minute of play. Three to one breakers. Two goals here in the second half. One for Chicago back in the 61st minute. Zakia Bywaters. And then Sydney LaRue just a few minutes ago, 74th minute. Getting that one back. 3-1 breakers. They led 2-0 at halftime. Goals from Shepfer and Noguera. Assisted by Sanderson and O'Reilly, respectively. One other game currently going on. Try to get a score for you on that one, Portland and Washington. And this will be a corner kick forced by Heather O'Reilly. I believe that's the ninth corner kick for the Breakers this afternoon, this evening. Unofficially, we go with nine. Unofficially. You are the statistician here of the team, so we'll go with what you say. Pulling double duty tonight. Unfortunately, not double pay. That's okay, though. The corner kick. And coming out to punch it away was McLeod, and then sent up over the goal. It'll be a goal kick for McLeod. There's still time in this game, too, for the Red Stars. I can't let up, they can't give up, they can't put their heads down and, and get upset about that goal by LaRue. They still have to, you know, buckle down and focus and, and you know, two goal lead isn't a huge, huge lead in soccer. Washington and Portland are in the 25th minute, no score. The only other game currently going on. 79th minute here, as you see on your screen, Breakers three, Red Stars one, first of two meetings this season. The next one will be in Chicago on uh, the 9th of June. Sydney LaRue trying to work some more magic, sends it into the air to try to track it down. Kaya Simon coming after it as well. LaRue trying to win it back. LaRue attempts to drop it for Sanderson. Picked up by Masser. And the Red Star is trying to clear the area. Back to midfield. Folks and defense there by Kia McNeil. Didn't let the Red Stars player get any space there and obviously wanted to try to draw it off sides if possible. And that's deflected staying in. Sanderson to Simon. Back far on the right side, Sanderson with room. And it goes out, and it's a throw in for Chicago. So not enough room for Leanne Sanderson, who has an assist in this game, two on the season. Had the game winning assist last Saturday against Western New York. Yeah, Sanderson's a great player. She's very smart, and she's very good at distributing the ball. 
Everybody in the press box is rejoicing right now as the sun has just about set beyond the trees here. Everyone is unfortunately going to have quite the tan on their face and nowhere else. Hopefully it's a tan though, not a sunburn. There you go. It's also very windy outside. We have an injured player down the field. And that's Leanne Sanderson holding the back of her head. Oh, that's not good. Let's see. She's a tough player. Sanderson, obviously back on her feet, grimacing a bit, but hopefully okay. Again, as she grabs at the back of her head or her neck. The kick from Whitehill. In the air, King, a header. Would it be far or wide of that post? McLeod picks it up, though. That was a good ball by Whitehill. She's done great with those kickoffs all day. Near sideline, King has it knocked away from behind by Bywaters. And they say it was off of King. King doesn't know why. And then Chicago just throws it in, but out. Yeah, now, now the it should look like it should have been Breakers' ball, anyways. That they will get it. It was just a strange turn of events. The Breakers didn't take advantage, unless maybe they were changing the call at mid-throw. There, not exactly sure. 82nd minute. Wenino plays it back from McLeod to the midfield. Bywaters, and it's an offsides. Another offsides by the Red Stars, and, and now they're starting to see time winding down, and they're they're really trying to force it because they don't want to lose this game. Obviously, with the time winding down, need to keep taking a little more chances. Not much time remaining. 83rd minute, down by two goals. And for the Breakers, they just want to, you know, keep possession and, and take some time off this clock and, and not let up, especially, you know, in the defensive zone. They don't mind these consecutive throw-ins to milk as much clock as possible. And for Sanderson, it looks no worse for the wear after going down and grasping at her head or the back of her head or her neck. Played in for Sanderson. Can't connect there. And Chicago clears it out of their end. Waiting forward is Julie King. King plays a pass Folks for Lohman. Lohman in the midfield area. Sanderson now to Simon. Simon into space. This is LaRue again looking for another one. The right foot shot and she scores. Side netting on the far post. Two goals for LaRue here in the second half. Three on the season. And now the Breakers have seemingly put this one away up four to one. Her run just snuck behind the defender and she's so so fast like we've been saying all afternoon and, and you know they had no chance it was also a great shot get that bar pop post shot <laughs> sydney larue in the 74th minute and the 84th minute to make it 4-1 breakers breakers entering the game today had three goals total and they've obviously surpassed that with four today I believe another offsides whistled on Chicago. I actually think the ball slipped out of bounds and then um, Masser played it. Let's check out this second goal of the game for Cindy LaRue, excuse me, in her third of the season. Taking that lead pass and again goes to that far post, tucks it in. Yeah, and, you know, Kolopny didn't even have a chance to, to stay with her. Breakers not satisfied with a 4-1 lead. It's Gotta do more. It's good to see them, though, not letting off the gas offensively. Kalupny making a run up the left sideline. Looking for a cross opportunity. Kalupny has it knocked away by McNeil. 
Regains possession. Stops the ball. Taps it towards the corner for Vandenberg. Left foot centering pass, knocked away by Lohman. Kicked forward by Noguera. And a throw in for Chicago, a substitution for Chicago as well. Jessica McDonald has come in for Chicago and it looked like when Nino went out, so they bring in a forward for a defender. For obvious reasons, down four to one in the 86th minute. They're just trying to push and pressure offensively and just cut it to this lead. And an easy pop up to catch there for Phillips. One goal she gave up, really not much she could do on it, but she has made some great saves. And they're going up for a header there, and it looked like LaRue got the worst of that exchange, but she's back up on her feet. Yeah, she's dangerous, obviously, going up, both trying to head the ball. sure if our listeners heard that announcement or you could not claim it. That's what I would do. Mini Cooper. <laughs> Somebody lost the keys to their Mini Cooper. Back to the action on the field. 87th minute. The breakers up 4-1. to one. Lots of time for Noguera right there. And look at King making this run down the side. King. Quick touch for LaRue. I'd like to see a third goal for LaRue here today. She's going for the hat trick. Simon plays it back. Dragata looking for a cross. There it is. LaRue trying for that third goal. It comes loose. Sanderson almost got a foot on it. Sanderson trying to gain possession, and she kicks McLeod. Trying to obviously kick the ball. And hopefully we got her maybe just in the gut and not so much the face or her hand, and she's obviously in a little bit of pain. And again, Sanderson, that ball was right there. It was loose. Cloud did not have possession. It wasn't, uh, you know, a malicious or, or vicious kick by Sanderson. She was just going for the ball, but it's dangerous for McLeod, who's, who was right in there. Her face was right there going for it. I have to give McLeod a ton of credit, too. Her team down 4-1, to one and she doesn't, she doesn't care, obviously. She's going to try to stop every ball she can and just try to uh, gain her composure. I think she may have taken that right in the stomach, and obviously... Have your wind knocked, everybody knows what that feels like. Yeah, it's not, not a great feeling, but it's good to see her get up and, and get ready to take this kick. She uh, recovered a lot quicker than I think anybody up here would have. Breakers, they're coming right back. Trying to go at her. In the 89th minute. So the Breakers, barring a miracle, here's a replay of that. And yeah, it looked like she took it right in the stomach from the left foot of Sanderson. That ball was loose. Heather O'Reilly taking a well-deserved seat for the Breakers as Adriana Leone checks in. The 20-year-old from Maple, Ontario, played collegiately at the University of Florida, playing now in her second game. Yeah, it's good. O'Reilly needs a break. She's been working hard today and, and last week, too. An assist here today, two goals last week to earn her Player of the Week honors in not the NWSL. Not to mention a lot of, you know, defensive plays and some runs down the side that have really been a key in this game. We are in the 90th minute. And another substitution in Sydney LaRue, obviously well-deserved as well. Two goals here today. And now three on the season. As checking in for the first time this season is Kate Howarth. Sanderson, Simon trying to go after it, and that is going to be a, I believe, a goal kick. It's a goal kick in the 90th minute. Probably have a couple of minutes of stoppage time, just like in the first half, and here's the announcement. Nope, another substitution. 
Just the announcement of the Howarth in for LaRue substitution. Yeah. LaRue obviously gets the reaction from the crowd after her two goal game. So we are into stoppage time here. Yeah, LaRue's a, a great asset to this Breakers team, and, and she's played a key role in, in the games we've seen, in the home games at least, so far. Yeah, LaRue with that game time goal in extra time on opening night against the Spirits, so they were able to steal a point in that one. And then two goals here today, and the Breakers will pick up three points and the victory. So for the time being, they'll be tied for first place with Portland, who is currently playing right now against Washington. Last check, it was scoreless in the 25th minute. And we just got an update. Portland has taken the lead, one to nothing. So the Breakers will improve to 2-0-1, oh and, and they'll play their next two on the road. The Washington Spirit on May 11th, then at FC Kansas City on May 18th, before being back here on May 25th, once again, against the Washington Spirit. And that charge by Nagara was a little bit unnecessary. You know, there's not that much time left in the game, and, and she didn't really need to go for it as hard as she would maybe at the beginning, more yeah, towards the beginning of the match. 4-1 game in stoppage time. Don't want any last-second type of injuries. As obviously saw the breakers get a couple of their players off the field. As that is headed up over the crossbar and bounces through the uprights. Well, it's good to see the Red Stars still trying to cut into this lead. They just want some momentum for the end of the game to take into their next game. Yeah, Chicago will be back in action quickly. They will play Wednesday at Sky Blue FC. So a two game road trip for the Red Stars and they'll look for their first win again on Wednesday. That goes out as King kicks it away. The end of today's match brought to you by TCG Network Services. This is Bywaters, the goal scorer for Chicago in the game, but it goes out for a goal kick. It won't matter. The final whistle sounds, and the Breakers take a 4-1 victory over the Red Stars here this evening. Breakers now 2-0-1, seven points on the season. Chicago falls to 0 2 and 1, and just that one point for Chicago thus far. To recap the scoring in this one, the Breakers scored two goals in the first half. 20th minute, it was Katie Shepfer from Leanne Sanderson. And then in the 26th minute, Mariah Noguera scoring from Heather O'Reilly. And then at Chicago. Maddie, you were going to say something. I was just going to say, you know, the team has to be pleased. The Breakers have to be pleased with the effort today. The offense really came alive, and, and this is what they really needed. And then Chicago was the first to get on the board in the second half in the 61st minute. Zakia Bywaters scoring her first of the year for Chicago. That made it 2-1, to one, and the Red Stars had a bit of momentum, obviously right back in this game, but it was taken away by Sydney LaRue, who really on that 74th minute goal, made it up herself as she had uh, the ball back in the defensive end on the near sideline and just set it forward for herself to track down, got to it, had a bit of a tussle with Winino for it, but it came loose and then it was one-on-one -on -one LaRue against McLeod, able to put it by her. And then later on, just 10 minutes later, in the 84th minute, LaRue again from the right wing, able to tuck one inside the far post. And that made it four to one. So LaRue, two goals in the game and three now on the season. Officially the game winning goal going to Mariah Noguera. Yeah, I think other teams are gonna take a look at this game and see that there's gotta be an easier way to, to guard LaRue because she is the scoring threat. She, you know, put this game away for Boston. So, you know, if you're playing the breakers, how do you stop LaRue? That's gonna be the key for the rest of the season. And LaRue, O'Reilly both playing fantastic here today, really. Everybody in a Breakers uniform had a great day, including Ashley Phillips. We'll go with an unofficial, and obviously after the game, you'll be able to find the 
final totals in this game, but I believe she had three saves and certainly had a huge one off a corner kick in the second half where the header came right at her, just a reactionary save, a little punch it up with two hands. And that helped save a potential goal for Chicago. The Breakers here saluting the ninth straight sellout for the Breakers. Attendance of 3,113, the largest ever here at Dillboy Stadium. They added in the extra seats on the far side, and they pay off here today, and it pays off for a Chicago, or excuse me, for a Boston victory over Chicago. The Breakers will be back in action next Saturday. They'll be at the Washington Spirit, a 7 o'clock opening kickoff. They'll be back here at home May 25th against that same Washington Spirit team, also a 7 o'clock kickoff. Chicago will stay on the road. They'll play at Sky Blue FC on Wednesday. Well, that will just about wrap things up for our broadcast here this evening. We thank you for tuning in. My name is Scott Sudikoff. For my broadcast partner, Maddie Sadler, we say goodnight. This broadcast has been brought to you by Media Boss TV. Breakers win 4-1. to one. Good night, everybody.